What's going on, guys? I'm here with Mr. off. We got books out here, and today we're gonna talk about how to get books for 100% fucking free. How do you do that, Matt? That's that's your specialty. I just ask them. It's the first thing I do. I don't know these people, but I'm getting to know them. Actually, I know them well now. So, if you wanted to get them free, the first thing you need to do is, of course, is give them some type of value. Each company that you deal with value is different. His value might be his space. Her value might be her time. This person's value might be something totally different. Find out what that is and then work on that and then strategize against that. Of course, when people are going to tell you no, then the more you do it, the more you refine the process, you want to um, you want to avoid certain things that you ask them, and then... Like like what? And what don't you want to say? Uh, you don't want to use the word buy. You don't want to use buy or... You don't want to use buy or purchase. Those are the main ones. You can use other words, acquire, uh, what do you do with? Avoid that question when they, any type of mind. Avoid what do you do with? Avoid using words that, or, or asking in a way where it sounds like money will be exchanged. Mm. You only, you want to exchange your time versus their time. Your time might be piling this stuff up. They don't want to deal with that. Your time might be, hey, I don't, can't get no books. I got five dollars capital. I only want to make. Uh, I need to. Buy, I need to buy whatever I gotta buy. So, if, if you're not, just say for example, you're not comfortable talking to people. I realize that the talking to this, a lot of people. There's some people that have that issue. They don't feel comfortable just talking to random people and asking. So what I would advise is say, go to. Some type of bookstore, or I didn't say, not even say bookstore, just say personal store. You go in a grocery store, or wherever you That's go. Me, right? Yes, you. Um, when you go inside the store, talk to some random individual. Find it. It could be their shoes. It could be. It could be what they have on. They see this thing on the news, whatever it is. The more you do that, you'll feel comfortable. And then you know, be re be relentless. If the person says no. Uh, we we don't have any books for you. You can't get any of these books. Just go back tomorrow. I will really say that tomorrow. Go back next week. Write it down in your book. They tell you no again. Do you have that little book right there? I saw you. That's one of them downstairs. That was not that good. I usually I've been writing down everything, all my processes. This guy will just one. be sitting there, and out of nowhere, he'll pull out this notebook. I'll just start writing in it, and. Like, what the hell's going on? And if he doesn't have the notebook with him, we're going to borrow us. He's writing on napkins, you know, so. Yeah. But, I mean, you, you got a good point. And what kind of stuff are you writing down? Like, it, uh, when you talk to someone and you're, you're like, taking notes on them, right? Yeah. And I, I'm taking notes on what they say. Because I, I look at it, I'm not the, I, I can't type it in my phone and text it. I will if I don't have the phone. But I like to write it down, and there's something psychological. When you write it down, you can visualize it and see it more. I haven't been selling books for 10 years or anything. I've been doing it for two and a half years. And I started in the garage, like most people have. When the first company, I couldn't get anybody to even sell any books. Now we have a 8,000 square foot warehouse. No, sorry, 8,000 square foot bookstore with the warehouse attached in the back um but going back to getting them free is just ask that's the main thing ask them because you know what you want you really don't want to pay no money nobody wants to pay for any damn thing you want to get everything for free but it's unfortunate you can't unless you <laughs> pretty much ask no the only question the only question is a question that don't ask should you have a business card for books? Someone asked. A business card? Yeah, so when you go in and you're talking to them, do you care? Yeah, yeah I give them my business card. Okay. I give everybody my business card. I give out gift cards. This is I give out seven. I give out seven. I give them uh, uh, Starbucks at, uh, gift cards. Everybody drinks Starbucks. Right. Even if they don't, they don't. First time you go and you bring Starbucks. No, not at all. 
Okay. Unless I meet the person. Gotcha. Now, the first time I go, I have them with me. I usually stay around five dollars. I don't go too more, too much more than that. But the appreciation so, on the business cards, what do you like? You don't have to say company name or anything, but like, are you you're big on not using certain words? Like, you you don't want to purchase books. Books are trash. You say this a lot. I want to acquire. Them. So, do you have? Do you recommend people put like recycling or declutter service? I see a lot of people going that route. That's the route I started. Because you know I where I think I fucked up is I made my company name Avery Buys Books. And then at a certain point, I was buying so many books, I was like, shit, I'm going to start getting books for free. And I was like, my company name's Avery Buys Books. So now I frame myself differently a lot. So. I, 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 had the, I personally like the recycling in it because in a sense, that's what we're doing. Uh, and, I, and I'm very transparent with the companies or the, the entities that I work with. I tell them, yes, I will make money on these books. But... You're going to, I'm going to help you multiple ways. If you work with me, you do not have to worry. You got one less thing you need to worry about is man hours working, dealing with these books. Yeah. You do not have to worry about the chances of one of your employees getting help, hurt by picking these books up, moving them from point A to point B. You don't have to worry about your space. You will have this piece of real estate forever working with me, doing whatever you do. This guy's name is Junk Man. He's like, yeah, you know why I chose this name. It's a good name. Yeah. It's actually a good name. So, does he sell books? Yeah, yeah, he's a book Because books are goddamn junk. They're yeah. fucking junk. They were junk to me before. They still, they still junk. It sounds stupid. Yeah. They're fucking yeah. still junk. Yeah. I got How many books, books do you have place right now? About half a million. <laughs> Half a million books, probably damn near. I, oh, looking at it, how many gay loads? Probably have about half a million books in there. Currently, the, that's with the ones that go to the bookstore, the MF, and ones that we're having process. Yeah. And we can actually hold and I probably can hold about 200 books in just the warehouse part. If we, that's if we triple stack 200 them. gay loads. 200 gay loads, yep. We triple stack, we triple stack them, and that will leave just a small alley, but to show that we have the space gotcha. in there. Gotcha. Um, to grow some, we have uh, racks. Can we sell? We um, so have you triple stack. Do you have a forklift yourself? I have a pallet lift. I do not have a fork. I'm getting a forklift. I made a bad mistake, and I got a company that dumped me for free. Three tractor, tra no, no, actually, yeah, three tractor trailer loads of books, and it took us, it bogged us down where we cannot, we could not press it as fast as we could, if we normally would. But they all came at one time. Three tractor trailer loads of, of pretty much the majority of it was just donations. Unpicked stuff comes from multiple different places. Oh, if you want to get books, think of it like this. This here is the one item that is in every household, every business, every place in the world. And everywhere. you can go to any business and find some business that has this. So who do you ask? People ask me all the time, how do you get books? Ask everybody. Ask your mother. Ask your mother's coworkers. Ask someone else. Because some one of them is going to lead you to getting a lot of these. And that is it. How you can do it, and then you Google it. Every question you ask any seller, Google it first. Because if you put it on a group, I'm gonna watch it, and then I'm gonna Google your question, and I'm gonna try to figure it out. What do you mean, like, what kind of questions are you talking Whatever about? Whatever your question is. Most questions can be answered. We live in an age where Google can tell you anything you wanna know in the world. So if you could go back in time and actually sit down with yourself, Mm -hmm. And you, you, Matt back then is like, yo, I'm about to sell on Amazon. I'm about to do this and that. You, I know I, if I went back, I, I'd be like, look, motherfucker. And I would, I would sit my ass down and I would say, you need to focus on this, this, this. I, would, I have a list of things that I would tell myself. What, I will, that, okay. what would you tell yourself? I would tell myself. You can go anywhere with this. Like, yeah, this is, yeah, you can go. I would say, hey. First thing you need to do, and 
is look at whatever, don't chase a shiny object. First thing I would tell them, stick to whatever your core business is, whatever your core metal is. You can, you can elaborate on it, but stick to your core. Your core might be cherry picking. There's nothing wrong with that. Keep doing that. Your cherry your bulk, your uh, thing might be bulk. Go ahead and go to bulk. Once you get good at one, then you can start to do both. Which would you start with? My opinion, I think the bulk is m more profitable, time consuming wise. Now, it does cost more money than cherry picking because you have to have a place to have it, you have to have a way to transport the item. You have to invest more in it. You have to buy pallet jack. Pallet jack is, is, is this is this a reason why you're pushing for books for free? Is it because you're like, shit, I'm paying no. two hundred dollars for a truck? Because I don't want to pay for this shit no more. I want to keep my goddamn money and I want to pick your trash up. That's right. the reason. Yeah, that, that, but of course I factor all that in. But the reason why is I realized this is your fucking trash. These items here is trash to majority of the people in the world. I didn't read books before this. I'm not a book reader. You know, a book actually puts me to sleep. <laughs> if I read a book right now, I'm going straight. To I'm going to sleep. But I listen to audio books. I listen to a whole lot. Yeah. I probably listened to way more audio books than the average person. I probably last year I calculated it was 127 audio books. Well, yeah, you listen to audio books like when you scan. Yeah, when I'm working. Yeah. When I'm in the car, I listen to it. Uh, constantly, I'm listening to some type of audio book that got to do with some type of business or or self help or something like that. But these these books are they are the one item that is more plentiful than anything else. But the other thing I would say is don't start with just this book. If you sell books, there's nothing wrong with selling books. But learn another item. To sell or, or or try to get not necessary that this how you can don't put all your eggs in one basket but if you want to get them for free think of it like this this is trash you just have to use right wordage and come up the right way and the best way is just to ask however you ask is going to be different of course you're going to get a lot of no's i got plenty of people to tell me no Get the fuck out of here. They ain't saying those words, but that's pretty much what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But all it did was give me more confidence to say, I just got to refine the way I approach them. Right. Like when we had the conference today, I met the owner of the bookstore that's right beside us. You he was here? It. Yeah, yeah. It was a, remember when we had the thing at, at the, uh, what's it called? At the coffee shop? Mm -hmm. Right beside was a used bookstore. Oh. And I met uh, the used bookstore. Oh, yeah. Now, I thought you meant back in Virginia. No, no, right here. I met the used bookstore okay. on the right. Gotcha. Place. My name is Rita. Nice bookstore. Can't think of the name of it. But even that, you want to get free, go to the bookstore owners. A lot of them sells online. They're not an online seller that has a bookstore. Right, right. And a lot of times, those places, if you, if you bring textbooks, or if they get textbooks, like as donations, they won't even take them. And if they do take them, because the student might look at this book as trash. A lot of times, these places will actually throw them away. And these are the most valuable books. You know, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. But this... I forgot I did the analysis how many books are thrown in the trash every year in, in my state. It's a lot. It's, I can't remember how many tons it is. But... If you want to get other one, another way, think of it. If you want to get a book for the people, who, that is the most common question that I see in, in the groups is how do I get books? The best way is fucking ask every goddamn person you fucking see. I have more conversations about people that want to find out information about books than any other product I've sold in the past. When I was selling cars, they I didn't care about a car, but everybody got a car. You could only have one car, but everyone has. We'll get to questions in a minute, guys. I'll see you guys asking questions. questions. We'll, we'll we'll scroll back through and answer all those. You, you do feel like uh, do you feel like you're a salesman? Do I am. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think everyone in the world is a salesman. No matter even if you think you're not, you know, we have the power of FBA. We have the power of going on Amazon and having these books fly off the shelves, but 
when it comes to getting the books, even when you're cherry picking, you know, you're going in these thrift stores, you want to get back room access. I'm always talking about that. Get to the back room and get the books first, you know. Um, but I mean, getting getting books for free. I, I I really started getting books for free when I when I ran out of money, and <laughs> my my goals are big, and I ran out of you know like I'm just gonna stop you know getting books, and I started getting books for free, and then and now I get almost all my books for free. I, I do a lot of consignment. Do you do any consignment? Do you, no. That, that's insane I did. to me. What I did, did. What, what, why did you stop doing that? The reporting part of it. I gotta give you money for your trash. I'm doing all the work and you getting money off of it. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what you're doing. Right. I'm alleviating the problem by taking them off your hands because they're taking up space, but you don't know where to give them. The, I want to start back doing the sounds, but I don't want to yet because I, I got to think of a proper way that makes it feasible for me and them and me to do less work. Because before I was the, the company that, that that helped me get to this point, I was paying them. It was a, it was a city entity. I saved them thirty four thousand in two thousand eighteen. So that's when we start looking at like, oh, I don't fucking need to save you no know, damn that much money. Yeah. And I didn't get, I didn't get, and I'm paying you. <laughs> yeah, I'm paying you, and I saved you thirty-four thousand dollars. Yeah, in one year. So that's what made me realize. Oh no, I gotta refine this shit to make it seem like I am not just an individual. And how would you I go? How, how would you go about refining it? Make it. What would make it worth consignment for you? Consignment for me. What? Yeah. What scenario? Like you're talking to a librarian. You're like, hey, look. You know, we've been doing this for a while. A thrift store or a bookstore mm. or whoever and you're like this shit's trash the books aren't that good whether or not they're good you're, you, that's what how you frame it. you're like you know it's a lot of work either way yeah. no matter what's happening it's a lot of work what would you like what would make it worth it for you would, would you have them what if they scan the books would that make it worth it and then put them in, outside in what would make it worth it for me now the way i look at it is the less label if i teach you how to do it my way and you we can add on you can look at my way and then add on to it both of us give you value then yes what do you your way? like i train you to say for example i want you to scan it this way and filter it down this gotcha. way gotcha and you, so they're giving having me, the person who who is working with you with all the books you're having them either do it or that them have someone else do it for them before you even yeah before i pick them up yeah because i would pay them more and give them value on how to how to monetize this and most uh most library systems they're old people they don't they're doing it for free so then they're, they're not looking at it as the value of making money they're looking at it as in the community getting something to read right these books will, so these books won't go in the trash right, right. they're looking more of a at, at a way where it's i'm saving yeah this, I'm saving the life of this book. They're not looking at it as money value, as a business. I just don't want this book to go in the trash. Right. That's the way, excuse me, that's the way the libraries are looking at these books. You have to come up with a way that makes them say, hey, I'm helping you save this book and make you money at the same time. Or, the, or keep, keep your money at the same time. Either way, they still have to get rid of these books, whoever it is. If it's in your home or whatever, it's causing space. You're tired of looking at it, it stink, or whatever the case may be. You just have to figure out a perfect way to word it to them to make them feel like he he's actually providing a service that I am, and which both all of us are doing, that it helps me, but it helps them too. But all in all, you're helping yourself more because you're going to make money off online. And we do get textbooks. Some of the companies I work with, we get them. Um, the other day, I got eight PlayStations from a library. Uh, it was PlayStation 2s and PlayStation 1s, which also on Amazon. Yeah. We get video games. We get the actual uh, board games because the libraries 
have all of that stuff they when they turn it over. So when they get when the PlayStation 5 comes out, they're most likely gonna give me the PlayStation 3s. Because they first started giving me the PlayStation 1s, now they're giving me the PlayStation 2s. So once they get the new when the new system comes out, they're probably gonna get rid of all the PlayStation 2 uh 3s and give me those. How how far do you go for books? The farthest I've went is five about well, Four and a half hours away. Okay. I I, I would go further for better quantity and for the, for the relationship. Quantity. The yes. Is what would do it? Yeah. The quantity and the building of the relationship okay. of, with that person. It's not so. It's really the relationship first, and then the quantity second. Does that make sense? So if I build a relationship with them. The quantity might come Got, yeah, within yeah, smaller yeah, yeah, amounts yeah. over you, years. You, you might get one here, but then all of a sudden they're swamped and you'll get 20. Yeah. Or something like that. But, uh, but when I went four hours away, we picked up maybe 30 gay lords away from them. It took us three trips to make it there. It was three different times because they had a sale. We went there to pick it up. It was probably about 30 gay lords. Over three times, over three trips, but then we just made a, took a day out of it, hang out in the city, picked their stuff up. They had their volunteers loaded. By the time we got back, we unloaded and I actually got some, some very pristine, great quality, very good percentage doing it that way. So what, what I've heard people say, like they they are ordering a truckload. Is that a 24 Gaylord or 48 Gaylord? 48. It depends on the truck. 48 to 52. Can you rent that kind of truck? You personally cannot. I personally cannot because then you have to have a CDL. Gotcha. The most I can fit. How much bigger is it than a 26? Because you can rent 26 48, trucks from I, Penske and Budget. Yes. What about the, the, how long is it? 48 feet, the container. 48 yeah. and 52 feet. The 52 can hold. So, uh, more, so would it be worth it for you to get your license to, to get mm, that? No, uh, it won't be. Definitely. Gotcha. It's cheaper just to hire somebody. Gotcha. For them to pick it up and you just drive it with them. Gotcha. And then you can get accounts with um, all the different freight companies. And there's software that you can use that will quote, um, quote price check all the different softwares and give you the best value of to get the items from the material from point A to point B. Right. All right, guys, we're gonna get into some questions here. I'll pick up the camera. So see a lot of you guys asking. So we're gonna go back to the very top. First question, first, first comment is, it's hard to talk to random people. When you're talking about going in, you said- you It's said, hard to talk to random people, it means there's nothing wrong with that. So what you would do, what I would say is to just, when you're in the grocery store or, uh, or grocery store or any any kind of location, go somewhere and ask just some random question, just to feel more comfortable. Can you give an example random. of you doing this? Like, yeah. did you go to like Sprouts or, or like Walmart and stand by the peaches? <laughs> I would do that anyway. But yeah, I don't have no problem with that. I go talk to anybody about any kind of so content. Are you, are you, you say you're extroverted? Now. Now. More. Before, I did not. I didn't know before, you. I didn't talk be, to Being how long ago? Before. Less, about uh, a little over 10 years ago. Okay. I so you, it's a muscle you had to work on. Yeah, I was kind of forced to do it. But the more I talked to people. It's probably a big deal when you were selling cars. No, nah, I had no problem doing it then. Okay. Because... I wasn't the car. I was the person in the back. I just invested the money on the car. I talked to the people, but I when I talked to them, by the time they came to me, it was ready ready to buy. So it was a little easier talking to them. Right. We got Jeremy in here. What's going on? He says Matt be dropping jewels. Uh, Diego, so what's up, Romer? What's going on? Mark Corbett, Appreciate it. always showing up. What up, Mark? Mark's not too far from you. He's in uh, Rhode Island. Okay. What should you have on a business card for books? We just we answered that one earlier. I have buy, buy, sell, trade. Basic. 
You doesn't mean you have but to buy it. Doesn't mean you have to trade it. Do you think you should put the word buy in there mm, on the card? Yes, but it doesn't no, no. <laughs> that kind of goes against it. What okay. I'm saying, but depends on depends on your person. So that goes with the other question with the guys that's hard to talk to the um, right people. In his case, put buy sell trade until you feel more comfortable to saying, uh, uh, I don't buy them. Until you feel more comfortable talking to random people. Gotcha. Buy, sell, trade, because that's going to bring somebody there. Gotcha, gotcha. So doesn't the, mean the you're buy... Got, doesn't, doesn't mean you have to stay with the buy, sell, trade. The buy is going to attract more people. Yes. It's an easier sell. Yeah. The word is. The gotcha. word is for them, oh, I can get money. You might have, you might be buying, you might be, in my opinion, I might be buying your time back. I'm buying your time by right. saying, hey, you don't got to deal with this. Right, right, right. So you don't have to it's all about framing it. Yeah, correct. So, um... Junk man says, I saw a documentary about a guy who hustled books like a street library. That's it grew idea. into a huge, he grew to a huge reseller. What's the name of the, the, the documentary? Yeah, comment that, Junk man. What's the name of that? Mark Corbett, Junk man. He's talking to someone else. Oh, he asked the same question we just did. I'm honest with sources. Uh, this is work. It's heavy. It is. It's hard. Yeah. I can't. He said I can't. Nothing that's fruitful is easy. He uh, junk man goes to storage auctions and yard sales. I, I've always wanted to go to storage auctions. Have you ever done that? I have, but not for books. I gotcha. I, I have, but I didn't buy nothing. Yeah, there. Uh, do you follow Amelia versus Amazon? She's on. No. She's on Instagram, but she she's pulling like. Apparently, she's listing five hundred books every day. Damn. Yeah, just her and her boyfriend up in uh, she. You got some good places. Great Britain, yeah, yeah and every week there she's going to these Great auctions. Britain? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How are the books there? I don't think she's in here, but if anyone from from Great Britain is here, I think it's, I think it's a lot of opportunity because I think it's like Amazon ten years ago in mm -hmm. America. I could be wrong really? about that. There, I know there's less demand. There's not as much demand for the books, but there's also way less competition. So, got some good scores of free books on Facebook Marketplace. Yep. Great place to put it. Facebook Long Marketplace. Try, try to put it up there once a week, even if you do it religiously. Every Monday, you put it on eBay. I mean, not eBay. Um, Facebook Marketplace. Offer up. Let go. Depop. Do you, do you have a lot of success with uh, Offer Up and Let Go? Uh, I used to have a lot. I don't do it as much anymore. Um, Cause I don't have the time to do it like I would like to, but when we do do it, we do, actually I have better success on Facebook Marketplace selling this stuff faster. All right, guys, we're gonna try to blaze through some of these questions. There's a ton. I'm still going back in time. He says IPA. Someone, yeah, we're drinking IPAs. Mm -hmm. um, if sorry if I skipped a couple. Um, what did you say, bulk or cherry pick to start? Matt said that he would. I start off with cherry picking. But you would I tell recently, yourself to do bulk if, yeah. you, if you had. That. I only cherry pick for about uh, maybe six weeks. I said this was not for me. Gotcha. And that's when I went straight to the back and started setting up deals in the back. So if you're thinking about selling books, stop talking and watching and start doing. 100% I agree with you're that. You are right about that. Yeah. Well, what you can do is listen while you work. So as you're doing the grunt work, as you're going out, as you're driving, you know, put on put on people that you find valuable. You know, I, I learned a lot from Caleb Roth, the book flipper, and and Reezy, and um, just any 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 type of uh, aspect of your business that you're struggling with. Get an audio book. You know, if you're struggling with talking to people, uh, listen to books on how to talk to people. Um, that I feel like. That that's actually why I love selling books. Is there's so much boring shit uh, about selling books, like scanning, you know, driving to sources, and it gives you the opportunity to really slow down and learn and, and process this information. That's why I like cutting grass too, because I would just hop on the mower, and I used to have a landscaping company, and I would just put on audiobooks. Anyway, I bought a whole estate of books for forty bucks. Damn, sold one cookbook to the author's family. For twenty dollars, score. Yeah, it's good. Many used bookstores are not familiar with selling books on Amazon. That's correct. Yep. I hope you have great success, junk man. I I bought a whole storage unit with five hundred poetry books. 
for twenty five dollars. Oh, for the whole storage unit, that's a good price. What found you do with an, the books? Found an envelope inside with fifty dollars cash. Oh, you made your money back already. Right. Everything is pr everything is pure profit there. Jeremy says, "Ask, ask, ask." Yes. Money Badger, always trying to get more. Money Badger is my competition. He's over. He's somewhere in Tennessee, but he's always coming up in my territory. The competition is not him. He doesn't have enough. Don't take it personally. I don't know you. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, the competition should be Better World Books. That's the way I look at it. Better World Books, Bronze and Noble. I said them, they are Bronze and Noble. The owner of Bronze and Noble, I very much doubt, will be coming, sitting there talking on live for maybe for two seconds. You set your competition with them. Now, would you hit them? Hopefully you do, <laughs> but that's a higher bar than hitting someone that is a three million dollar seller versus this company's book companies that do three million dollars in a day. Yeah, <laughs> you've you've heard of them, and I've seen companies yeah. and I've met people that do three million dollars in one day. I haven't met the owners of the companies, but I've met people that work for them. So if you set your ball with them, the psychological will hopefully transpire so you can get to that point. If I had more capital, fate of all says, if I had more capital, I would be doing amazing, but I have a family and it's super hard to invest even on cheap books. No, no, books but are free. But books are free. That's books. the whole point of this video is, is, is get the shit for, get your inventory for free because the problem with this business is it, you have to spend money to make money, or that's what we're told. It's not true. That's yes, correct. Books are the lowest barrier of entry with anything online. There's other items like that, too. If you guys are enjoying this, hit the like button. We've got, we likes. got nine, nine likes, and his social media is going to be below. It uh, is going to start posting more. But if you guys we'll try to uh, in my world ecom, he's on he's on Instagram. Yeah. Like you, you can you guys can tell this guy knows a fucking lot. That's why I'm yeah. trying to bring him out in the world. Now, okay, what I was saying with the to getting him the, the the you don't have a lot of inventory. You don't have a lot of capital. Yeah, it's not if you're dealing with books, you have to look at it. You have to spend either sleep faster. That's the first thing I would say. If you like to sleep eight hours, you sleep six. Or a fast six, eight, eight, eight hours. Get up very early, and if you want to build, find a maximum minimum. It doesn't necessarily have to even be books. Whatever you sell, say I need to do this per week. Is that the book flipper? I thought you were easy. You're good. So once I do that, once I pick the minimum maximum, what I need to say. You write it down, my maximum, I have to, my minimum I have to send in, it's just say 50. We're in July right now, next month, the books, book game is gonna change a whole lot because yeah. we got kids going to college. So get the books in now. So if you do 50 a week, between now to thing, what's that, 100 books, you're gonna get decent sales. It doesn't necessarily have to don't look at what I'm doing, what he's doing, what this other one's doing. I started off only selling. I was happy if I sold a book a day because I didn't think the shit was real in the fucking first place. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought it was some bullshit in the fucking first place. So if I sell one book a day, I was like, damn, I sold a fucking book. Shit. I sold something online. Somebody don't even know who the fuck they are. So think of it like that. If you do that, and then all you gotta do is just write it down, and multiply it, and keep at it. It's not gonna. It's, of course, I don't know your mindset. And the more you do it, and the more diligent you are, the better outcome you'll get. It's only right. It might take some work. It's gonna be work. You're gonna have a lot of bumps and bruises. I came all the time. But the more you do it, and the more you grind on it, you'll wake up one day and be like, "Damn, I can't believe I built this shit." All right, next question we got. Paddle Upstream. Yeah, me, me and Caleb talk about that a lot. Where is he from? A lot of hustlers out there, especially the I'm African. Virginia. He said, what's that, diaspora? Get up them likes. Yeah, guys, smash that like button. 
slap them stacked right. I think he was getting at there's not that many black resellers that, that post bad. at least. Yeah, I don't like posting too much. Yeah. I do. I post in the groups, but I, then I don't know. Really yeah, he, he's pretty active on Facebook, but he needs to be more active because I mean, I, there's a lot of like ROI just from talking to these people. There's a lot of smart people out there. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, Amazon wants to know you are a good seller. Not sure what you're talking about. Must have been something we said. We're all good sellers. Everybody here is a good seller. Some are just better than others. Thoughts on buying Gaylords online? I have been Fucking looking. Crap. Go I've, buy them. I've been looking for sources over a week, and I've only found one dude selling Gaylords. Tips on finding people. So. Yes, yeah, sell them. Sell them to you, wherever you are. <laughs> and get it to you wherever you are. His you information, in books. His information is going to be in the some bio. Media. You and DVD, well, he's actually CDs, on, on a note, get it on a serious. He's actually kind of being serious because he, yeah, you're getting, serious. he's getting to the point to where he's actually becoming kind of a wholesaler because he's he has so many gaylords that he's like, well, shit, I can just flip this real quick. You know, whatever you get it for, fifty bucks for the gaylord, you can flip it for a hundred or whatever. So you're basically like a supplier now. You're like yeah. a distributor. I have I so. have access to way more than I can go through at the time. But if you guys want gaylords, I mean, thrift stores, libraries, just just go ask. Go to these yep. places and ask. And if you don't want to ask, tell me where you are, and I'll figure out the deal for you, and then you can pay me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good hustle right there. <laughs> <laughs> to set up the deal for you. If you know uh, you're dude, uncomfortable. I've, I've pulled books from, from YouTube and Instagram. Some people watch my content. I mean, a lot of you guys are probably very uh, niche down. You guys, A lot of you guys are resellers. But I think a lot of people on Instagram that follow me are retail arbitrage people. And they'll reach out to me and they'll be like, yo, Romer, like this, you know, X liquidation, whatever is going on. And they'll hook me up with it. They're like, I don't want the books, but I know you do. And so I think I think there's lots of thing, good things that can come just from from talking about it. I mean, that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm talking, you know, like yes, when you're in the yeah. grocery store, you're, you're talking when you're talking to librarians, you're, you're, ta you're talking. It's word of mouth. This is fucking word of mouth right here. So I heard 2000 is a magic number. For what? I don't know what he's talking about, Josh. Well, 2,000 what? Probably 2,000 in inventory. A lot of people... Imagine number to do what? To, to like get sales or to be a successful uh, Amazon nah. seller. The, the magic number is the rank. Yeah. And what you, what you bought it for. Uh, or what you paid. Those are the magic numbers. The magic number is not the inventory because you might have one product that makes a million dollars. Right. So if you get a book... And you can make a lot of money off you get the right book. You can OA. There's so many different ways you can flip books. You can buy pre cherry pick. You can uh, bulk. You can OA them. And then you can do what he's doing is you can get other sellers to send you the books and you sell the books for them. Yeah. Consignment deals. Don't do that, guys. Just send me all the books. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, someone says, I like this guy. What's his gram? All of his uh, in information is going to be in the bio. Um, I'll get I'll get that from you. It's not in there right now, but after I after I upload this, I'm gonna enter all that. So if you guys are watching this after the live stream, it should be down there. IPA, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really like it too much. I'm a Heineken drinker, but that's what they got here. Yeah, you drink it. You you mixing over uh, there. Yeah, I got. He's got one. whiskey and beer. Yeah, we doing it right right here right now. With Gaylords, it's more about getting through all the books in a timely manner, right? Yeah, anything you do is timely matter. So think of it like this. All right. Good questions, Mark. I'm a, I'm a, I like to write it in a notebook because I, I, I feel it's more tangible. All right. Write down your process and then get through it. If you're doing a Gaylord, you need to do it fast. A gay, if you're doing bulk, first off, your, your per, your, um, damn, I can't even talk right now. What is it called? Your your call your 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 average buy price your average sale price is going to be very lower because you're buying the books for lower price. If well, it's because you're sending everything in, right? Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. sending it. If you make some profit, send it's because it like I was talking about this other day. People always ask me what should you set your triggers at, and I'm like, well, it depends. Are you, do you have the books in front of you? <laughs> do you have the or in front of you? It, like it doesn't matter if you paid two hundred fifty dollars for the gate order zero. You the books mix. are in front of you, so now you need to make profit on those. Yeah. But if you're cherry picking, you're going in a store. Be more cognizant of of what your triggers are because you're going to be. You don't want to spend a bunch of money if you're not going to see it for three months. You know, like oh, I'm spending a dollar for four dollars profit, but you're not going to see it for four months. 
you know, think a, about that. A guy put that in the post in one of the groups the other day. Can he buy a book? To kind of the comment that somebody said earlier about buying them online. Most of the time you buy them online, the guy was, I think he was buying it for like something like 200 or something like that. Now, can you make profit off of that? Yes. Now, would I buy a, a Gaylord off of that price? I probably would. I would right now. But it had to be some great goddamn books in there. Yeah. You know what I mean, it wouldn't have to be some random shit. And that that's the thing. That it's price. like, uh, it doesn't, just because it's price high doesn't mean it's good. No. Right? The, the ones that are good is the ones you get for free. Yeah. Because <laughs> who gives a shit if you lose, if you love money? Of you love the with these babies in it. Yeah. Textbooks. It's like, it, what you're going to do. That book is not a good book, though. It, yeah. sell, it sells fast, but it don't make a whole lot of It product. was at one point before, yeah, that before was the 8th edition. edition came out. The blue is a better seller yeah. than the black. A lot of people can't sell the blue one. I can sell them all. Send them, don't send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> Slide in his DMs. Hit them up for some restricted inventory. No, uh, if, you guys, if you guys do have restricted inventory, if you I do, will. He will do it. Because you send me, you send to me for free. He's all about the free books, y'all. He's all about the free books. If y'all want to dispose of your inventory for free, hit up Matt. Oh, yes. If you want to get paid. If you have an issue, too, or getting rid of your duds in bulk, I can handle that part, too. This, yeah, this guy is a logistical giant. He, or uh, you're, you're a beast at, at figuring all this shit out. I, I would just like to have, like, metrics on, like, what goes in and out of your warehouse. Like, just, like... I would just get like a notification on my phone every time you pull in with, with Gaylords or whatever. Yeah, pull in with too many of them. I, I, I can find it quicker. I have a bad problem that most people think is a great problem. It's too yeah. much inventory. You just need to figure out the systems to, yeah. to process all this shit. To get rid of shit. it faster. Um, practice talking to people and let them know you are just trying to improve your social skills. Yeah, that's it. Today yeah. I spoke at, uh, today I spoke this is my second time. I'm not really big with speaking in front of people I don't know. There's one thing about putting the, putting the message on Facebook because this is some text. But when it comes to speaking in front of people, that was like a fear that I had since a kid. But the more I started doing it, it actually feels good. And then if you're doing, if you're finding somewhere that sells books or buys books, obviously that company has some type of interest in books. Whether it be any kind of store, location, whatever the case may be, you just have to feel the car. And then, even if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, stick your chest out, keep your head up high, and look them in the fucking eyes and yeah. say, hey, I want to buy your books. I No, sorry. You changed the word. <laughs> I want all your books. I want all your books. I had to snap out of it. Because it, it, it seems like at one point, maybe you were saying that. Maybe you were saying buy. I did. Yeah. I did that for a while. When I realized when I first started changing it up, I said, man, this is a lot of work and I'm giving you money. I need you to give me money and me to give you your time or your space or whatever the case may be. Someone says, let's see. Someone's talking about Facebook Marketplace. I'm getting lost Great in these to questions. Sell. Is it a good place to get them? Yes, I've got them from there. It's a good place to put to post your ads out. We will free removals, stuff like that. And it'll make a difference how much it is. It could be one of the greatest relationships I have. I picked it started off, I drove forty five minutes away to pick up one box. So yeah. He, he's out of Virginia Beach, someone's asking. Yeah. So Everyone, stay away from there. There's yes. No more books. You can't get them from here. From I think there's no books in the state of Virginia anymore. Right? No, there's not. It's not. They're all gone. They're every, I, I got them all. From Virginia, Maryland, uh, North Carolina. You Someone can't. says, what about saying you rehome books? That's a good one. You rehab yeah. them. Uh, I've used that. I find them nice spaces, nice places to stay warm in comfortable readers' hands. <laughs> How many uh, people do you use to process your great lawyers? Right now we have five, five and a half people. Three of them are new, the other one and a half. One of them is there all the time. The other one is a half because they're there whenever they want to come in. 
but I have made it super simple and simplified it enough. So I took all the bumps and bruises, the cuts, the scars, the stabs, the stitches, all that stuff to make it. So the only thing they had to do is it very, very basic work and it makes it a little easier. So I took a lot of them just to make it easier for the people, for the employees. I don't have as much as I would like because if I had more, I would do a hell of a lot more books and you couldn't buy no wholesale from me at all. When you source books, do you quickly check keep a chart or do you rely on eScore? No, I don't check either one. I check off my, you know, let me change that. I check both, but after a while, you should start to remember the data that you've written down in your book. And that's the reason why I remember it because I wrote it down a lot. I used to check it more, and I don't check it as much because I remember it. I basically say this book here. It's not really the book we're looking at. We don't. The title means nothing to us. The only thing that means something to us is our eyes. Half of the time, we don't look at the front. If you're a book smart booker, I don't give a shit what's inside. I want the money to make the money off the damn book. I look at this number here. Then I base off the rank, the weight, the dimensions of the book. The more you start to pick them up, you should look at it and say, just say uh, this right here. Does this book have water damage? It does. You can't see it in the tip. It has. But will I scan it? Yes. Because I want to know the data. Because I'm going to look at it. I'm going to glance at the picture. So the next time, once I see this book here, not this book. This is just an example. That I don't have to scan it next time. I already know this is a good seller. You come across the same titles that often? Yeah, that much. Yeah. Do you have a book that book after or something? No. Oh, huh. There are certain books. The reason, like this one here. Yeah, that one always stands out. Yeah. You know, you know why it stands out. Got because you see it all hippie the time. Flip, uh, hippie, uh, hippie flipping, right? Yep, that's me. On IG, y'all. Uh, he's a hustler, what? too, out of New York. What's good? This one. You know, once you see it, you're restricted in it, so you can't sell it. You send it to him. <laughs> so, if you get this book, just send it to this guy. That's how you start to remember. It happens to me sometimes. I mean, maybe you just go through so many more books, but, like, I just think it's faster to scan it. This is another one. The tipping point. This is, you see this. We get this. I mean, the, the proof's in the pudding right here. We he, get this, he's literally uh, picking uh, up these books uh, that we just pulled from downstairs. It's actually a great what's book. It, what's the e score on that one? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the tip the, the e score. You just know it's good. I just know it's, a, it's yeah. a good book. No, it doesn't sell. You can't make no money off of FBA. Okay. You can make, I think it's something like 35 cents. So if you want to make 35 cents quick, you can sell this book. It's somewhere around 35 cents. This is another one we see a lot. Chelsea Hang. We see a shitload of these. Yes. And another thing is, like, you got to realize her, her book right here is, I think, you get somebody could check it. I think the rank is under 500,000. I believe the rank for the tipping point is right around wherever the hell it's at. It's right around 130,000, something like that. But you should remember these books if you're scanning them. Of course, you're not going to remember every single one. You, you, got, you guys got to remember, I think a, a reason why he's he's kind of starting to look at books more um, is because you're starting an actual bookstore. Yes. That's probably a big part of it. He, yeah. He's actually going to... I want to find out what the what the public would... would like a brick-and-mortar bookstore. Is, yes. We, we should be opening it up right after uh, Labor Day. And once we open it up, then I'll have more data on what... The um the public ones and how to do retail. It's all new. I, I believe in diving in and then figure it out afterwards. If you guys like Matt, smash that like button. Show him some love. Help this algorithm out. Push this video up. I'm getting lost in these questions, guys. Ah, I was wrong. The tipping point, eight hundred and and fifty seven rank. This book right here will make you 80 cents. 80 cents. Mm -hmm. If you pay half a penny, is it worth sending in? As soon as it gets into the, as soon as it gets to the warehouse, it's a guaranteed sale. 80 cents. It's like, it's like, so if you had a hundred of these, how much is that? 
They're guaranteed to sell. You know how many books this sells a day? Thousands. There's no real, no one really knows how many it sells. I think it's thousands, especially if it's 800. I know Chelsea Handler, I know she's under half a million. Hematone distrib uh, Distribution says, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist have gotten me so many books. I'm wondering what you based out of, because I know a lot of people have success with Craigslist. I've had mediocre success, but it seems like Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, these huge cities, it's like you could really crush it um, on these on Craigslist. Yeah. Do you, you pull money from Craigslist? No. Not like I used to, before I did. But you could. Where yeah, yeah. When we before, we used to pick up a lot of stuff. I used to pick up um, uh, when people passed away or something like that, you know, all the stuff. And now, I don't, I don't, um, I don't focus on posting the ads like I should because uh, the manpower is not not there, and we get way too much stuff now. One hundred and one thousand. Then another book that a lot of sellers pass up. Eight dollar book, nine dollar book. I'm gonna tell you right now. I know I've sold it on FBA, but I've never read the price. No, this one I did not sell on FBA. This one I sold in the thing. It's 40, 44 cents. We got a specific question. Which is uh, not worth it. But the 80 cents definitely is. <laughs> yeah, no, From the Money Badger, uh -huh. he's asking, he says at he, he's been selling for five months, finally at 5K, 5K a month in sales, I believe. Re good. Recently had my first $600 and $800 day back in, to back. In five months? Maybe he means uh, 5,000 in inventory. Um, recently had my first 600 and 800 dollar day. Yeah, so he's been selling for five months. Yeah, dude, um, come on to you. Back to back, do you think Gaylords is the next logical step? Or should I keep grinding, uh, cherry picking? Currently, actually, I've, I've met my, his wife it, at it, UK's, but. It, it's a two part question. With, of course, with cherry picking, you got less over there. A whole lot less over there. I don't have to pay for them. The only thing you have to do is the only thing you're paying for is once you pay for the software and that's it. And then boxes. Versus if you were to do uh, bulk, you, you could do it in your garage. But after a point, your garage is going to get full up. Then you're going to be like, damn, I got to I gotta put out money to make this money for the storage unit. We started off with one gay lawyer. The first Gaylord I bought was in, 2000, in February 2017. And I processed it in the garage. I did a couple more. We were doing one a week for a couple weeks. And I said, nah, in my garage, I need to put my motorcycle, my four wheel in here. I need to get back to doing regular stuff in the garage. That's when we got to a storage unit. And when I did that, that actually opened my eyes more of how much more we can do and went from one storage unit to another one. So, back to your question, it all depends on you. If you want to do bulk, you can do bulk. Bulk is more work, in a sense, because you have I to figure out. I also think he's in a uh, smaller town. I believe he's in a smaller town, not too far from Nashville, but, like, how do you address that? Like, guys in small towns, it's like, hey. it, it, it kind of makes more sense to do bulk, get... Go to the, go get a truckload or whatever, and bring them back to you, and then you can have books for a while to work with. Versus cherry picking is going to be pretty oh, stressful. See that part? I, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about. It. I can make a good guess. Okay. Because I'm not in a small town, so it depends on you. I would say that depends on your time. How easy is it for you to go cherry picking? What are your percentages that you're pulling out? How much time are you paying? get this product how much you want to make versus the bulk you might not be good in your area because of the it's not enough places and stuff like that so it's kind of the it depends on the it's subjective to the area so if you're in just say Chicago and you can get a good quantity of bulk go with bulk in my opinion if you can do cherry picking and you can talk your way in the back before the stuff comes to the front through cherry picking. Give me one second. All right. I'm going to answer some of these questions while he's gone. 
questions that I can answer. Questions that aren't map specific. If you guys are enjoying this, hit that like button. Is it air conditioning up there? It's hot as shit in Chicago right now. And we have air conditioning here, but it's still pretty, pretty toasty. Got this little, they, they have these uh, coolers or whatever, this little fans in each room. It's, it's one of the hottest weekends ever. I think the whole country's pretty fucked up right now. It's hot where you guys are. What's Facebook? His, his Facebook's Matt Adolf. In the past two weeks, sold $50 of free books. Nice. Yeah, it, it free is so great. I'm still going back. Still going back. All right. Junk Man says thank you. No problem, no problem. I gave, your, I gave out your Facebook, dude. Yeah, yeah I left me on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on. Uh, I'm not on Snapchat. I'm not too. But if you if you got a question, you can post it in some of my chats. Better um, World yeah. Books is all of our competition. Someone says no, they're not my competition. Nor be yours. My competition is an ebook. I want people to read a book. Right. You know what I mean, but guy. She's talking about. Talking to other people, commenting. Just go to storage auctions. Blah, blah, blah. It's good places. Call everywhere that has a book. Someone, Every company in the world says, has a book. Matt never post. Mm, really? <laughs> That's true. That's uh, a fact. Romer loving the content today. I love you, man. Let's see. Um, all about filling up the funnel. Mm -hmm. Networking. Yeah. It's all about the network. Yep. Yeah. If you, and then learn about them. Don't just look at it as a business transaction. Look at it as a, I want to make a friend with this individual. Because the friendship can go farther than, than, than this is the financial part. For sure, fate of all, he's, he's saying thank you for all the advice. Mm -hmm. Matt, holla at me. I'm trying to cop wholesale from you. There you I'm, go, I'm in, DM me. I'm in South Carolina. I can says. get it there. You can be in Alaska. We can get it to you. you do you sell to... gated things for people? Gated I, stuff? I sell gated textbooks. Do you do you sell anything? Gated? No, I don't. Um, um, I do not. Not yet. Maybe down the line. We haven't looked at it at all. Okay, if I buy Gaylord from you, uh, DD says, do you have a way to lift them into a rental truck? You have a forklift? It depends on where you're at. I can get it delivered directly to your door. Can you we, get do, like, we do all the logistics. So, okay, so, so it, it would if be... All you had to do is is tell me but your once, zip Once code. they set that shit down, they need a pallet jack to move it. Yes. Yeah. You, if so. you're doing Gaylords, it is preferred yeah. you have a pallet jack. Yeah. Because otherwise, you cannot physically move it around. Someone says two thousand to help you get ungated sales. Not sure what you're talking about. Two thousand what? Pesos. Danny says I want to interview you, man. I did an interview with you. Danny's funny. Romer, what is his IG and Facebook? Again, that's all going to be in the description. It's M of My World Ecom. Awesome. On Facebook and uh, Instagram. Yeah, sorry, Diego, uh, about the. My virtual assistant, which I just gave a talk on today, on how everyone should be using virtual assistant, has been slacking and not accepting people in the Facebook group. So if you guys want to get in my Facebook group, shoot a request. I don't think I'll cap it out, but I might cap it out one day at a certain number. So all that's already in the description. So if you guys scroll down, you guys can see that. I've got 2,300 sales in about five months, still gated in just about everything. So right. Uh, he's, he's pushing. He, he's probably, uh, that's probably right. Retail arbitrage guy. He's probably keep pushing. It's gonna happen one day. It's only right. It depends on your mindset if you really want it. Don't look at it. It's a it's a roadblock right now. But eventually you'll look back and say, "Damn, I can't believe I built this." He's saying this guy's saying fate of all is saying. Someone asked how to get ungated, and I think this guy said two thousand in sales a month. I've heard nothing about that. And there is a percentage. It is. He, I don't know or, what or it what is. Or once you, it depends on your metrics. Once you start selling a certain amount and 
Amazon looks at it like this. This guy is making us money. Or this gal is making us money. We need to give, if we give them authorization to sell this, this or this, they're going to make us more money. Now, I don't know exactly what the, 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 the parameters are with that, but I know it does have to do with traffic on certain items. Diego, Diego says, Romer, thanks for all the tips so far, but nobody asked, how are you so ripped? Workout plans, Romer. I wrestled for 10 years. I wrestled in college, and it's uh, I mean, it's kind of like you have standards in life and standards in my body, and I don't do a lot now. He was doing 75 push-ups every day. Nice. And that's pretty ripped. Look at those va vascularity on those those arms. You work out a lot? Not like I used to. <laughs> I, I don't work out. I work books. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's a workout. fucking workout. Dealing with some I, of these employees, that's a workout. That's I'll, a workout. I'll, I'll, I'll lift 50-pound boxes all day. But, I mean, no, I, I will work out hard. I'll, I'll do pull-ups when I'm on the road. I'll yeah. uh, do push-ups. How to sell... How do you sell the blue ones? How do you, basically, this guy's asking, how do you get on gated in textbooks? I don't know. I was grandfathered in. I sold my first textbook four years ago. I sell a lot of textbooks. I think newer accounts are automatically gated. I think yes. that you, if, if you really, truly wanted to get on gated in this, the, blue, you to work hard. the blue version of this, and I, I don't even know if it's that. I, it's, I know big sellers are still gated. Like, please, please don't take this answer for messed up. How do you get in gated to sell any of these? You have to do some work. Nobody's really going to tell you the answer to all of them. Nobody told me. I had to figure it out on my yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to really get ungated. You can get ungated in any item on Amazon. But there's only one thing that's going to take. It's going to take you to put the work. In. Yeah, and, and that work comes in different forms. Like, technically, like, we're drinking beer here, but technically we're working right now because we're out here and we're networking with other booksellers. That in and of itself is, is work because there's a lot of stuff I don't say out of respect for other resellers that have told me secrets and they say, Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm correct. telling you these secrets. I don't want you to put them on social media and I respect it, you know? Yeah. And, um, so a lot of ways to, to find secrets is to network in a really, that's work. You know, you're networking, you're, 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 you're meeting people and, and your network is your net and, worth. And it, it, it that's comes with sources, with other resellers, with people mm -hmm. in your business, with people interested in your business. You can network so many levels. What are you about yeah, to say? Yeah, correct. Correct. Uh, I forgot. But. Let's see, we got we got a ton of comments. I'll just scroll down to the bottom. Sorry, guys. About to end this video. We've been talking for over an hour now. Damn. Um, Matt, would you be open to being my book business mentor, Jeremy? I, I don't know. DM me and then we know. can talk some um, some other parts of it. Uh, that's the first time I've ever, I've not really had a bunch of people ask me that. Maybe one day. Slide in the DMs. Uh, you should link up with Raleigh Roots in Tampa. Ryan was a wrestler. They do re so Ryan, I'm guessing, is Raleigh Roots. They do resell. And yeah, he looks like a cool dude. Yeah, he does. He got a lot of good content. I watch him. I follow him. All right, guys. Thanks, Romer. Yes, it's hot. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm about to end this. You got any final words for, for Sell my more audience? books. Keep hustling. And holla at everybody that touch a book. That's right, Everybody. Dude. All right, guys, peace out. His his uh, social media is going to be below. If you guys like this video, go ahead and like it. We're going to drink some more downstairs. We've got Reezy down there. we got Kate Roth. So it's a good crowd. Peace out, guys.